You're a young blue dragon, too young to have seen the horrors of the War of the Ancients. Malagos, your lord, sent you to Kel'Thalas. The Scourge destroyed the Radiant Sunwell, but your flight and other dark forces have sensed that its power remains. You went, you found the living embodiment of the Sunwell, and fell in love with her. Then the cosmos conspired to take her away. You did everything asked, but the world demanded more. And after this, failure after failure is all that would follow. Loss and more loss until your flight is as good as dead. That's what Caligos faces, and it's the journey that will take him to the Dragon Isles. This video is made possible by our patrons. All of the custom footage, custom scenes, that stuff is extremely time consuming. Meaning that this is a video that absolutely will lose a bunch of money, but that's almost the point. We want to be able to make those dumb decisions because the end result is just cool. If we can go the extra mile, why not? Now, patrons get early access to content, including the next episode of this series, as well as physical loot and podcasts. We've got November's Warlock Month, class card art, and the awesome pin. And with all of this, I've been able to expand our lore team, including on the video front, to make more videos like this that require so many man hours actually be possible. So if you would like more things like this in the channel's future and fantastic perks, be sure to hit up the link below. Patrons, thank you. And let's get back to the story. The Sunwell was destroyed to resurrect Kel'Thuzad as a lich, but a sliver of its power remained, a weak magical energy that anyone, even the Scourge, could control. Coriolstras, better known as Crassus, was the first to realize this. He placed a glamour on the energy, transforming it into the idealistic life of a peasant girl named Anvina Taig. Others suspected the power still existed, like arch-traitor Darkan Drithir, and some only knew that a magical disturbance had occurred, like the Blue Dragons, who sent a young investigator named Kelagos. Mid-flight, he was fire. shot in the chest. That's when he crashed into Anvina's life. Darkan then stepped onto the scene, capturing Kalik and Anvina, but the powers of Kalthalas marshaled, and Lorthamar, Halderon, and their rangers saved the day. But still, Darkan was only defeated when the full power of the Sunwell flooded from Anvina, blasting him from existence. Anvina and Kalik moved to Kalthalas, where they helped the elves rebuild their destroyed kingdom. But there was little time to rest. The world's evils grew and the dark portal opened again. Nether Drakes, reaching the Nexus, were mistaken by the half-mad Malagos as invaders. He absorbed them into himself, giving him a moment of clarity. He looked out at the world and saw magic being abused, just the way that Ashara did 10,000 years ago, leading to the most destructive war the world had ever seen. He believed that without brutal action, the Legion would return. Proving him right, a fell-infused Kelthas tried to reclaim his kingdom, wanting to use Anvina to summon the Legion to Azeroth. It's a tale that ends tragically, Anvina sacrificing herself to stop the Legion and to cleanse the Sunwell. Kalik lost something special to him and fell into a reclusive depression, was her only purpose to one day die and cleanse the Sunwell. Kelikos agitated against the Nexus War, getting in Malagos's nerves, and so he was sent on a wild goose chase to Grim Batal, a place with a dark, dark past for dragonkind. Malagos's plan went awry, however. Once again, Kalagos and Crassus's paths crossed. Of course, Kalagos dis 
despises Crassus. Crassus created Anvena, a seemingly real person with real feelings, who Calic felt real feelings for, but who was in a way not fully real, who was perhaps destined to die. This would weigh heavily on Kaelagos as they quested together. Regardless though, they delve into the mountain, where they find Syntharia, prime consort of Deathwing, in the final stages of her experiments to create the Twilight Dragonflight. Kaelic then gathers a band of capable adventurers. Ronan, future Archmage of the Kirintor, Verisa Windrunner, the Nether Drake Zeraku, and a Draenei priestess called Iridi. Against all odds, they defeat Syntharia, but it's something that is at great cost. Iridi has to make a noble sacrifice. Once again, Kalagos has felt loss. By now, it is clear to all that Deathwing's agents are back, but first, Malagos has to deal with what he sees as rampant abuse of magic. So his war would begin. He would call all of the Blue Dragonflight together to stand against the mortals and to dismantle the Kirin Tor. But ignoring his master's call, Kelgos grants Eridi's last wish to bring her body home to Outland. And while this happened, the heroes of Azeroth, the Kirin Tor, and Wormrest Accord would all band together to defeat Malagos, ending the Nexus War. Now leaderless, likely hated, and bloodied, taking staggering losses, the Blue Flight hung on by a threat. Yet another tragedy in their history of loss. At Zinishari, 10,000 years ago, Malagos and the Blue Dragonflight bore the absolute brunt of Deathwing's betrayal. Using the Dragon Soul, he turned on a dime and destroyed them by the scores. When the Mad Aspect would return in the Cataclysm, one of his first goals was finishing that job. There are a few interpretations of what happened next, but it's all about answering the big question. With Malagos dead, who will be the new aspect of the Blue Dragons? The flight met under the embrace of Azeroth's two moons to decide between Kelgos, the younger but more popular option, or Aragos, the elder safe bet. And this is where our understanding of the history diverges. Aragos had been working for Deathwing the whole time. In one version, his betrayal is revealed when he tries to assassinate Kelagos, only to be saved by Taragos' sacrifice, as seen in the legendary quest chain. In another version, Kelagos is picked by the Blue Dragonflight, and Aragos flies into a rage, summoning Chromatis, a chromatic dragon destined to kill all others. It took the power of all four aspects, with Thrall filling in as the Earth Warder, just to imprison him. Meaning that potentially, Chromatis is still a looming threat. Whatever way it happened, Kelgos was, at least for now, the aspect of the Blue Dragonflight, and he wanted to put this flight to good use. The fight was on against Deathwing, and Kaelic needed a weapon like none other that had came before. He consults with the other aspects when Yzera is struck with an ironic solution. They needed a weapon that had came before, and this weapon is the Dragon Soul. The very artifact that, in its creation, had Deathwing deceive the other flights, the artifact that was used to almost destroy the Blue Dragonflight. It of course had been destroyed, so they would need intense time magic to retrieve it, so that it could be used against Deathwing. Luckily, Nosdormu was on hand. First, they went to the far future, to the threshold of the timeways. There, they defeated Morazond, the time-twisted version of Nosdormu, for Rite of Passage, then traveling back to the War of the Ancients, stealing the Dragon Soul, which, once returned to our time, is rewired with the Arcane, given to Thrall, and used to destroy Deathwing. 
Having fulfilled its purpose, the dragon soul is returned to the past as if nothing happened. The hour of twilight had been averted. Azeroth was safe. Seeing their victory and the recent problems that their kind had wrought upon the world, the dragon aspects relinquished their charge. The Age of Mortals began. We didn't exactly do a great job, and it was Kalagos, youngest of the aspects, who realizes that they were wrong, that they should not have given up. But first, the final tragedy of the Blue Dragonflight. After the Cataclysm, the flight was hanging by a threat. So many of them had died during the Nexus War, their leader had died ending the Nexus War, and through the Cataclysm, many more of them were attacked and were killed. Their new aspect had revoked his powers, and the world perhaps looked upon the Blues with suspicion, for they had brought a lot of ill onto the world. And that is when disaster struck. The focusing iris is discovered to have been stolen. This iris, an artifact deemed too powerful to be at large, had been ordered by Kelagos to be encased in ice and sent to the very depths of the ocean. However, Garrosh, the ambitious new war chief of the Horde, was seeking a new weapon, so he had other ideas. Those charged with the removal and with the safekeeping of the focusing iris are ambushed and they are murdered. Kalagos turns to Jaina for help, arriving in Theramore just as Garrosh's horde crushed Northwatch, goading the Alliance into sending their best and brightest to Theramore's defense, for it is where the horde would strike next, and strike they did. Kelgos even personally fought Vol'jin, leader of the Darkspear Trolls, throwing boulders down from the air. The Alliance found success on the field. Or so they thought, for it was all a ruse. With the defenders now gathered in victory, all in the city of Theramore, Garrosh unleashed the mana bomb a weapon the destructive power of which can only be compared to a nuke. Theramore is no more. And while the in-game representation may not have given you this idea, thousands and thousands are dead. A city has been bombed, and these deaths include Ronan, Kalagos' long-time adventuring companion. A man who, when Eridi died, had been there. This was a massive victory for Garrosh's horde, and it was the death of the Blue Dragonflight. Walking through the wreckage of Theramore, Jaina finds the Focusing Iris. And with this, the truth is out. This horrific atrocity was enabled by a Blue Dragon artifact falling into the wrong hands. The moving of this artifact, the transportation that had opened it up to be stolen, was upon Kalagos's order. This hit him hard. Not only had the Blue Flight recently declared war on mortals, but now their own precious artifacts were used to commit heinous atrocities. Stepping down as leader, he and the few remaining Blues go their separate ways. The already tattered Blue Dragonflight had disbanded. And with this, a new phase had begun. Kelago settled into Dalaran, his friendship with Jaina soon blossoming into a romance. Ascending the ranks of the Kirin Tor, Kalagos had finally found a new place in the world. During this time, Kalagos would find himself on another adventure, one that ended up significant, and that is the Spark of Tear at Galakron's Rest. The Spark forced Kelagos into visions from long, long before the War of the Ancients, an unbelievably long time ago when the aspects were not the dragons we know today, but were proto-drakes, more primal creatures, closer to their elemental ancestors. And he saw it all through Malagos's eyes. He hunted through the ancient forests. He saw the truth of Galakron's fall, how the great golden drake 
Talanixia's rebellion failed, and how Tyr and the future aspects defeated Galakrond. Galakrond was an existential threat to the world. He was a progenitor to many dragons. It was in this story that these creatures, that they turned from mere beasts into these important creatures who really were charged with the defense of the world. But Kelagos lost himself in this vision, believing he was Malagos, and was only saved by Jaina's intervention. But through this experience to the past, Kelagos is struck with a great truth, that the charge of the aspects should not have ended with the Hour of Twilight. The Proto-Drakes had protected Azeroth before they were given their charge. Tyr had seen something special in them, and that they had thwarted. Nazoth and Deathwing, that one time, didn't mean that that special thing had gone. Now the Dragonflights had to do everything they could to reclaim their power as guardians, and this is a truth that Kelagos would come to understand long before his compatriots. Some time later, after the trial of Garrosh, Jaina had become jaded with the Kirin Tor, actually resigning over the Horde's re-acceptance into Dalaran. Kelagos understands why she did this, and he ends up taking her place, with his new duty somewhat clipping his wings. He now had responsibilities as a member of the Council of Six, and through the Legion's invasion and subsequent Fourth War, he led rather than adventured. Sargaris's wound to the planet was a wake-up call for everybody, including the dragons. Even if they had given up their charge, this had still happened. The planet had nearly died, and it was only after tremendous effort to stabilize the world at the Chamber of the Heart that they realized their role was important again. It needed to be empowered with the essence from the flights. Caligos was integral, as after the Black Dragon essences from Ebonhorn, he was our contact with the other flights. What followed was a saga of quests that saw us deal with the large threats that each of the leaders were faced with. We helped reunite the dragon aspects, who really were understanding that they still had a role to play. Keligos came away from the Chamber of the Heart with huge questions. Was he destined to be aspect of the Blue Flight? Should the flight reform? What's the place that the dragon should take in the world? These are all things that he stewed over while we spent time in the Shadowlands. And by the time the Beacon of Tears hold light, calling the dragons back to what was, in a way, their ancestral home, five years had passed. Two while we were in the Shadowlands, and three thereafter. Now, with the beacon lit, it was time for the flights to travel home, to reclaim their destiny. And for the Blue Dragons, the character of Kelagos is key. He was the aspect, but he revoked his power once it was not needed. His flight had disbanded. Like Rathian in the Blue Dragon flight, he is starting again from square one. That's why he ventures to the Vault of Sindragosa in the Azure Span. Sindragosa was Malagos' prime consort and one of the most powerful blue dragons. She was known as the guardian of all arcane, but she was mortally struck down by Deathwing during the War of the Ancients in that initial and brutal betrayal. Flying blind, trying to go home, she ended up crashing into Ice Crown. That's where she died, one day to be risen by Arthas. But before all that, she built a touchstone for all blue dragon lore. The entire history of their kind, collective knowledge, and use of the arcane. She built a grand archive, an archive that Kelagos will journey to, looking for something. We do not know what, but we can be sure that it will revive the destiny of the blue flight. And that, everybody, is the core story of the character 
of Calicos. He's one of the people who is going to be extremely important in this expansion. And he's one of the stronger characters that Blizzard have built up throughout the span of World of Warcraft. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And of course, we are doing a full series on every single one of the important Draconic characters, the people who will be making big moves during this expansion. If you would like to check out our previous episode on Rathian, then you can check out the playlist. Other than that, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.